Okay, so today I'm going to talk about adding unnecessary shit to your novel. And I am such a victim of this. <laughs> As a pantser, I think it kind of goes along with it. I mean, because you get these ideas and you're like, oh, I have to throw it into the story uh, outline. <laughs> What's that? I don't know. And that's kind of where I fall into it. I mean, I went from adding a daemon. And if you don't know what that is, think Philip Pullman's The Golden Compass. You know, that little like basically essentially a part of your soul. Yeah, well, I was writing a chapter one day and I was like, you know what? This voice she's hearing, gotta be her daemon. I don't know what else it could be. Yeah, guys, I did that. <laughs> and then I have this talking mouse because I was like, that's a really cool idea, talking mouse. Okay, he's gonna start out being this silly little creature and then um, he's gonna become the most sophisticated one of them all. Um, Okay, so pantsing doesn't always work out because you kind of forget sometimes what you've done. I'm not even going to lie. And then you also throw in things that just don't belong. They're too much. They they just don't have a place in the story at all. And then I did this other really awesome thing where I have these two main characters and I decided they have this connection. So what kind of connection could they have? A blood connection because of what? A family feud. Okay, obviously Romeo and Juliet were on my mind, but in my head, you know, I was like, Oh, this makes a lot of sense. They're connected by blood. One dies, the other's gonna come back. Like, they're just always gonna be together because of this family feud. That's why. <laughs> so, my story also became riddled with flashbacks. Like, so many talking about all these past lives that these two characters had, which really didn't play a part into the storyline at all. They were unnecessary and it was just too much. But, you know, when you're pantsing through your story, you're just like, okay, and you start overriding things and you're overriding these characters and giving them flashbacks and all these different things that happened in these past lives that's not relevant at all to your current story. At all. And then with the talking mouse, basically he started out with this fun personality because in my mind I was like, oh, mouse, fun personality. Oh, it makes so much sense. And he was going to be like the comic relief of the story. So he had a purpose in the beginning. And then I... I don't know what happened, but I guess at some point I decided that he was the most knowledgeable out of my group of characters, which I have like four, five in this group, and he's the sophisticated one, and so therefore he has to be the knowledgeable one, the noble one, the one that everybody looks to. And it was a complete contradiction to the talkative mouse. So you can imagine, I remember going through the editing process, and when I went through I was like, um, what? What is this? What has happened? And it was also part of the overriding. I was overriding things because I needed this character to have more of a purpose. So I had to write more to compensate, I guess, for his lack of use in the story. Yeah. So basically, what I'm saying is overriding is a thing that we do, especially as pantsers. So if you're pantsing right now and you're overriding, stop, take a breath, and outline what you have, and kind of look at what you're doing, what's working, what's not. Because if your characters don't belong, they have to go. Do not write them in. Do not overwrite them to compensate that they don't have a reason for being in the story. If you have unnecessary history, eliminate it. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if I was a reader, I wouldn't care what happened in their past life. Great for them. Good. The characters, they know each other. They did these cool things. Hmm, cool. Don't care. They're going to just breeze right through it. Skim it. They're not going to read it. So unnecessary history has got to go. And then these other fantastical element, elements, especially if you're a fantasy writer, like a daemon. <sighs> that thing was all in my story. I overrode it all to pieces. The daemon was all of a sudden in her head all the time. She wanted her own physical form. She, I don't know. I gave her a whole backstory but she didn't really have a point in the story. So guys, if you're overriding, stop, get rid of it. The only thing that you should have on paper is something that has a purpose. If this character plays a crucial role in the future, keep the character. While the reader might not understand why the character is there or make it a brief kind of introduction, bring that character back. Don't make a brief introduction and then all of a sudden the character has gone, which I did that too, by the way. Because at the beginning of my story, I had this character named Chance, and I was like, oh, I know exactly what I'm going to do with him. And then I did it. He just fell off the face of the earth. So, again, characters like that. Don't put so much time and effort. Don't give them names. Don't give them any significance in the story unless they need that significance. So, guys, 
Stop adding all the shit to your novel. Just kind of cut it out. Let it go. Let it go. And I know it's hard, especially when you're writing and the daemon, by the time I got done with the novel, that thing had so much, so many words dedicated to it. But there wasn't a point. I didn't have a point to having the daemon in the story. She didn't belong. So I had to cut her. And I did. And it hurt. But you know what? You do what you have to do to make your novel better. And that's why we edit and we edit and we edit and we edit. So be concise. Th those are my words I leave you with. And I will see you next time.